So the greenest to Etrial takes about six days. And then they keep going. Okay. That's let, let's kind of high let's kind of outline our trip here. Help me visualize this a little bit better because it is pretty confusing as a way it's written. So there's the trip to Etrel. Then that takes six days. Then to Boulders to Baldur's Gate. Then they go to maybe Dragon's Dragon Spear, and then to Dagger Ford. Okay, we know that part of the trip anyway. So let's put that map here because we're gonna need it for sure. Okay. So we figured that part out. Last, okay, so they can have tr encounters to Etrial. Got it. And they get to Baldur's Gate. The city, the streets are narrow, so they get in the caravan. In the long journey, guards are expected to stick close, so they guard a caravan north. How'd I like the Agrum, by the way? Just. They got wiped just outside of the egg room by the half dragon champion who just multi attacks them all to death. So, yeah, like, uh, let's see. Notes. Like, at the very end. So, yeah. Um,. Mondath, like, ran into that room and was hiding there with them. They were challenged. Uh, where did they go? Because he challenges them to a one-on-one -on -one duel again. So Boris took, on, took him on again. Did better than last time, but still got his butt handed to him. What do you mean they didn't get to the hard fight? The half-dragon isn't the hard fight? Because in the in the actual like um, in the actual cave, in the hatchery, there's like nothing in the egg room itself, right? Dragon hatchery map. Oops. I need to DM that. So they got into the dragon shrine, had a big fight. The dragon hatchery is there's no encounter in here. Oh, there is the Roper and the two Drakes. Oh, uh, it's just as deadly. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even look at that because we didn't get that far. We got wiped on this encounter. The Dragon Shrine, which is CR6, and like Long De Rosa, Cyan Wrath just like we killed the Berserkers, we got Cyan Wrath down to like how much HP does he? Less than half, I think. I think we got him down to like 20 HP or something, but then party had no more spells, no more potions, and just two hits, two hits, two hits, two hits, <laughs> and their HP is gone. So yeah, we didn't actually do the Roper encounter. I see what you're talking about. Yeah, we didn't get there. I didn't even look at that because we didn't get that far. So, if you don't handle it right, kobolds bomb you, the Ropers drag you into the pit where the drakes bite you, then the Roper reels you in to eat you. Pretty brutal. Ah, it's pretty brutal. No, didn't even worry about that. We got knocked out before we got there. 
so. Okay. Uh, so that's our, our big trip. So the trip to Etrial is six days. Uh, because there's so much to do and there's other events. Uh, what kind of random events could we give them? Random roadside events. The journey north lasts 40, sorry, 40 days total. Day, trip. Can't type today. 40 day trip total, there we go, okay. See, this is really annoying because, like, they're all in their different cards, and I need to read all the cards to understand what's going on, so. You recommend No Room in the Inn, because it was pretty fun. Okay. Let's check that out. Many days pass without excitement, but others see monster attacks, strangers, and immediately NPCs. Check for random events every hour is excessive. One for every day. On a 16 or higher, one or more of the events occur as indicated below. In the morning, afternoon, so on and so forth. Okay. Event chance. Happens in the morning. Happens something like that. Adventuring life, golden stag, payback, no room in the inn. What is no room in the inn? It's recommended by just otherness, so let's check it out. After a miserable wet cold day that promises to become even wetter, freezing night, the caravan arrives at a large inn. Upon entering the warm, comfortable common room to make arrangements for the night, the embarrassed innkeeper tells the characters that the entire inn is sold out. All the private rooms are taken and the common room is reserved for a private party. The caravan will need to spend the night outside looking around the room. The characters just see one group, an aristocratic judge and his entourage of three human dilettantes. They smirk at the characters while making comments such as sleep tight and have a pleasant evening, followed by insults muttered under their breath about the characters mud splattered clothes and low breeding. If the characters ask about sleeping in the stable, one of the nobles speak up saying our horses are rather picky about who they share space with. We had to reserve all of it too for their sake. And the wagon is hard, unprotected. Hello, General Google Gloss. How are you doing? We are planning out episode four before we get into actually playing it out because it's pretty complicated. There's so many random events we can do. Um... In fact, the three and these MTs are four disguised veterans traveling to Boulder's Gate in search of employment. They need the they, they needle and goad the characters and their fellow travelers at every opportunity. Ah, so basically they get picked on by some people and we can have a fight. In a little in room if we want. There's four veterans. That's gonna be rough, I think. The roleplay sounds good. I don't know about a fight. But we should do one fight today. Okay. So let's roll. Okay, so that's our random events. There's also planned events. After they join, Yamna and Asbara join the caravan. Three planned events take place. Their timing is up to you. Uh, recognized. Unwanted attention. Whose friend? Okay, then it gives me four random events. What? The raiders camp on Greenfield is taken to cure it to cultists. They may have struck up hundred cultists who are now on wagon drivers. It's recognized. They make a check. 
characters, they're just recognized, so that's unwanted attention. Okay, okay, so let's kind of base these out a little bit better than they're shown here. So there's a 40-day trip to Etriel. Let's roll... Life on the road. Waterdeep is long. So that's after we get to Boulder's Gate. I mean, there's a lot to do in town. Let's just roll one random road event. Uh, the road event doesn't really work with the short trip. No, they just have an uneventful trip. Uh, nothing noteworthy. Note worthy. It is a nice respite from the days. The several days. Several. Several days of combat in a row for the players. Okay. Then they get to Etriel. In Etriel. In Etriel, what happens? Okay. Even with written encounters. There is so much a DM's got to prep and arrange because these modules aren't exactly kind to read. Um, Petro, a large orderly city overlooking the river, river Yonthar, is filled with merchants, traders, markets, so on. Its most distinguishing feature is a brilliant magical light that hovers above it, illuminating it day and night. It's painful to the undead and is visible from almost every corner of Etrigard, which is the is Etri of which Etril is the capital. Okay. Uh, when the characters meet Anthar Forme, Rume, they find him to be a good-natured paladin of Torm, the god of heroics and bravery. Okay, so we meet him. Okay, they ask about Leosin. Just on Un Anthar, is there like a reason we're supposed to meet him? Doesn't really say anything about why we would need to meet him. We just meet him because he's there. We'll meet with on far Rumay. Okay. That's that's taking that. Um he's a good nature paladin. Something like that. Leosin introduces him to the, Okay. If the characters ask for Leosin when they arrive, once the locals know him, none of the locals know him. They ask for Anthar. Anyone can direct him to the headquarters of the Fermi's faction in order of the gauntlet. The characters arrive within a with a within a ten day of within a ten day? What kind of English is that? See you, Zach. Have a nice one. Then the monk is still there with his handful of disciples too. Okay, okay. Um, they just catch Yosin before he leaves the city with a handful of his disciples. A 10 day is Faerun's calendar week of 10 days. Ah, uh, okay, I got you, I got you. 
That's the... I need to make a note of that. A uh, 10 day... means a week in Faerun calendar. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Very nice. Okay. So they've made a scuffle. Um. Okay. Um. He. It doesn't say he does. Um. He. I like uh, Justice's other idea though. He introduces them. To Onthar at the tavern called a pair of black antlers. Okay. Okay, so there's NPC. Image. There he is again. A bio. A wandering monk. We should probably drop in a link to both of them. In the notes, so I don't forget. Okay, they meet him. They find him good-natured. Okay. You can spend as much or as little time with the interaction uh, in entry as you and your players want. They're guaranteed to have a good time in Fermé's company, provided they consider to continue drinks, drinking, arm wrestling, horseback riding contests, sparring, and weapon training to be a good time. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, if the players don't realize it, finds a quiet moment to be sure the characters understand that impressing Fermé with their prowess their honesty and their drive is in the long is in their long-term interest. The characters can make a positive impression by winning a few contests, decide by an opposed ability check, or sparring matches with his troops. Okay, I got you. Well, let's do that. Let's see what kind of what kind of impression does the party make. Impression the party makes on Onthar. Um, let's see. Their prowess, their honesty, and their drive. Let's make some let's make some opposed checks with the party. So I think Boris should make an opposed strength check for kind of wrestling or something like that. Let's do one of those. So many screens open, I can't see my dice roller. But, but let's see. So Boris is going to make. Okay, take care, Just. Happy to have you drop by. Thank you for the tips, as always. Just is kind of like our resident Lord of the Dragon Queen scholar who helps us out with any questions we have about the the module. Take care, buddy. Uh, we're gonna make an imposed check. Oh, he has a plus. Or can he make a roll? He can. He's going to make a roll. Come on. Why did it roll two? Okay, so he rolled a 7, so I think Boris has a pretty good chance. Boris rolled a 7. Ah, oh, so they're both a little off their game. Um, they... Boris... So, Boris is able to best star at arm wrestling but uh, only after a night 
of drinking according to the paladin. Yeah, it's only because I'm drunk. That's it. Um, probably have some discussions with give everybody in the party a chance to make an impression. After that, uh, our party sheet. Make this smaller so we can put it down here. Uh, Catherine is probably going to. What kind of skill is persuasion, insight, perception? Maybe a wisdom check? I think that sounds good. She's going to make an imposed wisdom check, so she will roll a four. Holy cow. Lucky we're not doing any combat today, because these rolls are god-awful against his wisdom. He has no bonus. But he rolls a six, and she still beats him. Um... Oh, I need that one. Uh, Catherine um, shows off her education uh, during a long conversation with Anthar, uh, showing him that the party has a capable brain behind the brawn, maybe? So yes, there's there is a smart person among you. Um, I think Mara kind of makes a charisma check against him. He's pretty charismatic. Oh, she rolled a natural one. Oh no. Oh no, so much for that. Um, Mara um, is something of a concern for Anthar. He is not sure where she gets her power from. And her her aberration, right? She insults his whole family. Uh, something like that. Um. Yeah, and her. What was it again? I just looked at it, and then I read General Goggleness Goggleus's aberration. Her aberration. Companion uh, is not natural by definition. Natural. Um, he pries into her background only to meet resistance and yeah. He's kind of teasing her about it, but she takes it way too seriously and in insults back. Back. She took him too seriously. Nice, General Google, Google, Google loss. Uh, and then how about Rex? Rex is a capable hunter. And I think they definitely do some kind of like, not just brute strength check, but like a weapons handling prowess check or something like that. Maybe handling themselves out in nature or something. He's a leadership. Harry. 
Interesting. Um, so let's have him make a dex. What it? What skill is? What skill is nature and survival? Wisdom and intelligence. Both of which Rex has got pretty good wisdom. Yeah, maybe maybe he shows him. He, he actually teaches him a thing or two about plants. Let's see. So let's see. That's uh, nature is intelligence though. He's better at wisdom. Looks like a straight wisdom check versus straight wisdom check. Oops, I rolled two. And they both rolled a fifteen. Oh, Rex beat him with his bonus of two to get seventeen. Um. Very nice, very nice. Okay. So, where's my notes? Rex manages to teach him a thing or two about nature slash plants. Uh, in particular, he shows him a new use for a medicinal herb that is very helpful. Very nice. Thank you, General Goggles. Another nice suggestion. Very good. Okay, so that's kind of the impression they make on him. Then what happens? characters make some checks order of the gauntlet late in the evening after a day when Ferme has been substantially impressed by the characters he spends one sends one of his squires to summon them to a private room in the tavern ah so after they've impressed everybody this impresses Anthar and he invites them to a private room at the inn. Here's where we can copy what happens. Shows you to a private space off the tavern's common room and closes the door when he leaves. Waiting for you in the room are the are the broad-shouldered human paladin, the monk Leosin, and many pitchers of dark red wine. The paladin's face wears a serious expression unlike its unlike its usual open countenance. My friends, we have important business to discuss. At this point, we know mo almost as much about it as we do. You know almost as much as we do, and thanks to you, we know twice as much today as we did a ten day ago. Something rotten is afoot. We have no formal organization to oppose those rascals, not yet anyway. We are working on that, and we need people like you who know how and when to fight and how and when to keep their heads down and observe. Well, they're getting better at that anyways. We cannot promise you anything except long days filled with danger and stress, but what can be better than that, eh? Anthar and Leosin, along with a handful of other concerned leaders and scholars along the South Sword Coast, are in the early stages of, of organizing against the Cult of the Dragon. Oh, perfect! Where is Zack? So, part of our reward we thought that would be cool for the party was that they become some kind of group um, and a band and start a an organization against the Cult of the Dragon. So kind of their long-term goal was to, or Catherine in particular, to lead the fight against the Cult because they've been on the front line so far. So this is perfect, just in line with that. Um, Elanthor's organization is the Harpers. Characters might have heard of the older Harpers, but they're unlikely to know much about the secular group beyond what is generally rumored. 
that they are dedicated to equality and justice and keeping power out of the hands of those who don't deserve it. it explains that the Harpers are loosely organized agents are allowed to wide freedom of action. So, but Fermi represents the Order of the Gauntlet. His order shares many of the Harper's principles, but the two organizations are very different. The Order of the Gauntlet emphasizes faith, vigilance, and constant struggle against threats of evil. Many of its members are clerics and paladins, but the Order welcomes anyone who shares its ideals. Discipline is key, and the Order is distinctly more structured and hierarchical than the Harpers. The top concern of both groups is the Cult of the Dragon. In the past, the cult was more active to the east and was focused on creating Dracul Liches. It shifts to the Sword Coast and new emphasis on living dragons and on Tiamat is a cause for concern. The cult is on the move and it's up to something big. The Gauntlet, the Harpers, and the third allied group known as the Emerald Enclave want to thwart their cult's plans. In the meeting... Ferme and Erlanthar are offering the characters a chance to join their factions. At this stage, there is no pay and there are no ranks. What they can offer is help and support from the other members and allies. Who are spread from Nashkel and Candle Keep in the south to Neverwinter and Mirabar in the north. The horses that Erlanthar range for the character are just one of the examples of the aid the Harpers and the Order of the Gauntlet can provide. Ah. So they get invited to join one of the factions to help fight the cultists. Okay, to help fight the cultists. Um, do they join? Where's uh, members of the order wear a holy symbol openly? Harpers are group their silver harp nested between the horns of the crescent moon. Some wear open, some keep it in secret. Uh, the characters don't need to join either faction, but there are advantages to doing so and no real drawbacks. Even if characters do agree to join, don't agree, try to enlist their aid in tracking the cultist shipments. Thanks to the characters, the Harpers are now are now know that the cult is amassing treasure and shipping it north. So we have a quest to follow the cult. Okay, 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 I got you. Uh, the characters turn down the mission. Make some remarks. We're not gonna turn it down. We're gonna do it. Um. So what do you think? What do you think our characters do? Um. Boris. Boris is already kind of part of an organization. Catherine has the church behind her, but adding a badge of the Harpers or the Order of the Gauntlet would be pretty appealing, especially since she's a cleric. I think she sees this as a chance to raise support around their efforts and make her more famous you can have an organization another organization to raise in the ranks more people to get behind uh boris is hesitant going already working for his hold his dwarven hold and um, but would like to ally with the organizations uh, and Catherine so they probably will keep working together Catherine may formally join the Harpers what about Mara Mara is not big on organizations She likes the idea of the secretive Harpers, probably the best. Maybe the Harpers? Because hmm. they're just dedicated to... Uh, what do 
the dedicated towards it. Say that again. Quality and justice. Um, so she can sort of get in line with that. Depends on what do they mean by who is someone worth giving giving power to. Because he's more about stopping people from getting power than making sure the right people have it. And Rex has never been part of anything in his life. He's definitely not about religion, faith, vigilance, and the struggle against evil. I think Rex is more of a Harper man. Or a Harper Tabaxi, rather. Sounds good. He likes a fight for equality and justice and keeping hand to the wrong people. As seen when power is misused. Used. Yeah, maybe the Harpers, but she is kind of a conundrum because um, he has an old one as a patron. And that causes a lot of people to be a little wary of her Eldritch Magic. Uh, how's my day going? It's going pretty good. Um, today's been good. Low morning, then I had uh, uh, my wife's grandparents um, from both sides of the family have their birthday around now. So we had a kind of a birthday lunch at a very fancy restaurant uh, downtown, which is pretty cool. Caused me to be a little bit late, um, but it was still fun to get out and have a nice meal and relax. So that's been my day, and then I've been streaming. And I like to stream, so lots of good things in today's itinerary. How about you, General Googleos? How has your day been? Hope it's been a good one. Where are you, by the way? Because I'm in Japan, so my time zone, I'm early evening right now. But I know a lot of people are America or Europe, so the time is a little bit different. But I guess if you're in Europe, your day is just starting. And if you're in America, your day is just starting too or just ending, depending on how late you're staying up. But yeah, let me, how you, let me know how you're doing. Um, we'll hold off on an answer. And I don't think Anth Anthar wasn't really talking to her. Maybe? I think his biggest worry was getting Catherine on board. Uh, well, today not great, but yesterday I had a Pathfinder session. It is 9.40 in the morning here. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully it's not too bad because it's just 9.40 in the morning, so you're just getting started. So hopefully your day isn't going too horribly because it's only starting. Um, well, that's good. So you're what? 9.40 would put you in... What is... The UTC is 7.40, so you're like, what, Eastern Europe? Middle East? Somewhere in there? According to time zones? That's pretty cool. Ah, that's why it's not that great, because you didn't sleep. Yeah, I understand you. That sucks. Yeah, too bad we're... Oh, you're in Germany and it's 9.40? Eight. I thought... Because I lived in Berlin for a while, and Germany was only one hour ahead of... Oh, is this not adjusting for daylight savings time? That might be it. Let me check. Unless there's, there's not two time zones in Germany. There's only one. It is 942. Oh, you're plus two! Oh, I forgot. Why did I think it was plus one? 
mean, I lived there for so for a year, and I should know like the time zones. And for some, why do I think it's two ahead, one ahead? Yeah, all of Europe is nine forty-two. Is UTC so far? What is going on? I think my clock is just wrong on my computer. Because it's telling me it's 7 and it should be 8. I don't think it took into account daylights, maybe, but. Cool, cool. Where in Germany? I've already said it like four times, but I, I lived in Berlin for a year and I loved it. Great place. But, um, besides Berlin, I've been to Nuremberg, Frankfurt, and cities around that. Ah, oh, Northern Rhine West Zone. Okay. I don't know if I've ever been. I don't know if I've ever been anywhere. My my geography is so rusty. Oh, Cologne, Dusseldorf, Bonn. Okay, no, I don't think I've been anywhere close to that. I mean, I've been to Frankfurt, and I think, is Frankfurt technically? The problem is I don't know my western states, because I lived in eastern Germany. No, Frankfurt is not. It's not. It's too far south. I was right. I haven't been that far northwest. Berlin, Frankfurt, Nuremberg, around Nuremberg. Uh, Munich. Just through the airport. But no, I haven't been that far north. But... Nice. The place I always wanted to go. Because, I mean, Cologne, Dusseldorf, and Dortmund... And Bonn, the old capital of West Germany, would have been great, but I never made it there. I was too busy. So. Essen, Cologne, and so on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kuhn. Sorry. How's my pronunciation? It's been a long time since I've spoken German, too. Kuhn? Something like that, right? It's that O with the umlaut in König, like king, right? That always got me. I had to think of the word König and then think of Kuhn. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty rusty. And the problem is I speak Japanese all the time now, and so every time I try to think about German, Japanese pops into my head, and I get halfway through a German sentence, and then it turns into a Japanese sentence. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that doesn't work. But... I don't get a chance to speak it very much. If I listen, I listen to um, some German radio um, news news programs occasionally, and um, uh, I can kind of keep up with what's going on. But speaking, I'm so rusty in actually producing the language that not very good. But. Cool. Okay, um, yeah, that's joins the party. Uh, characters don't join. Okay, they give us the mission. They are given the mission to travel north. What? Guten on it schwer. Oh, good. <laughs> Ah, konnichiwa. I got you, I got you. I thought it was a German word for a second, and I was like, what? I don't know that word. I try to pronounce it German. Yeah, guten konnichiwa. Yeah. Something like that. I found the first thing that I can't remember is like... Not like the simple sentences, like I like this or I eat something. But like I, I've like totally lost how to do modal stuff. Like I was going here, I was able to do that, 
I did that when I was in something like in Germany. Weil ich war in Deutschland, habe ich wieder Deutsch gesprochen, gesprochen, aber immer, not immer, aber jetzt, see that's the problem, Japanese words popping into my head, aber jetzt spreche ich nicht so viel auf Deutsch. Oh, this is auf Japanisch. Uh, given the mission to go north, I'm getting distracted because